baby gorgeous welcome to bravo and please where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the bravo tv world this is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related so grab your can of goodies and let's get lit We did it. We are live. We're back on track because we didn't go live last week. We had a special episode of Bravo and Blaze. And it's been a lot since the two weeks that I've gone live. I manifested two huge things, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. I need to focus. All right. Hi. Hi. This is your girl, Jenny Blaze. We are live every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook with replays and the audio podcast available on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. I'm trying to talk a little bit slower than I usually do. I heard that's good for, uh, that's good for presenting. Pauses are important. Just like white space on like any kind of visual art that you're doing, like design. I'm getting sidetracked. But we are here to bring you all the latest in pop, pop culture, Bravo, and weed news. However, let me just give a disclaimer that this is for entertainment purposes and educational purposes only. None of this is financial, medical, and or legal advice. We are bootstrapping, feet on the ground, grassroots. This is that type of show, meaning my sources come from watching what Bravo puts out, but also what I see on social media, um, some of the DMs that I get on Instagram. Sometimes I get phone calls or emails, um, you know, and other rumblings and gossip. But I try not to abuse that this abundance of information i try to just some things i feel like are not for the public by the way my squeaky chair gotta get a new one i'm very aware of that I'm gonna get that fixed i just noticed it because i was listening to an old episode for a second okay let me get back on track again. <laughs> but you can always hit me up on Instagram to chat. I have a hard rule that anything discussed in DMs is confidential. You know, however, I am human. It's hard for me to pretend like I don't know some things. So if someone gives me permission, I may share something, you know, discussed in DMs. But <clears throat> this is how I try to... <laughs> Lead by example. So I'm usually caught up on all the latest chatter, but I'm also only human. And literally, this is a one woman show. I do all the producing. I do all the prepping, the setup, the tech behind the scenes, all that stuff. I do it all. Maybe I know it all. Like Bethany Frankel. Kidding. Where is skinny weed anyways? I saw that like last year that there was a skinny weed coming out by Bethany Frankel. And then turns out there was only an, an announcement and then nothing happened. Oh my God. Should I work with Bethany Frankel on a skinny weed? Should I call her? Okay. Anyways, let me go back. So... In summary, what I was trying to get at is this is not your source for world news and fact checking. Okay. I cannot go and check everything. I may make a mistake sometimes, is what I'm trying to say. Like, just, just give me some grace. Okay. Lay off me. I'm kidding. I'm trying, I'm doing my best here. All right. Today's show, I have so much appreciation for pop culture this week because. Something that I've been kind of getting back into lately is trying to 
revamp, not revamp, refresh my 90s and early 2000s hip hop because those were the times when I really used to have a good time dancing. Like I just, I love that era of music. And I remember listening, this was like a few, was it a few months ago? It wasn't within the last year, but I said, I was listening to Eminem song and I'm like, yeah, Eminem is, you know, amazing. Love him. And then I just started like laughing because I'm like, this straight white man really got us all out here rooting for him. Like he did that and props to him. That was so amazing to watch but now you know things have changed and he doesn't usually eminem doesn't usually come out in the news that much it's pretty rare so when i heard what was going on this week involving our girls giselle bryant and robin dixon i was like oh my god so many things have been going through my head and i have all these Hilarious scenarios that I gotta I gotta run by you guys because Luann can be a wench sometimes. She doesn't she's not that supportive, to be honest. She I don't know, Luann, if you support other women. But anyways, um just kidding. <laughs> We're best buddies. We're just this is how we joke. So for today's episode, we'll be going through in addition to whether things are shady or reasonable. I don't want to get sued for saying the wrong words in the wrong order. We are going to cover Real Housewives of Potomac, Family Karma, Below Deck, Summer House, Real Housewives of New Jersey, Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Miami, and Million Dollar Listing. I got a little bit of 420 news as well. It's just the pop culture news is so blended with the Bravo news. I'm This week is great. I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm already seven minutes in and I haven't even started really. I'm sorry. Let me pick up this the pace. Okay. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Like I said, we're live every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't worry. If you miss out on the live show, you can always watch the replay or listen to the audio podcast on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts. Stitcher and iHeartRadio, subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps this show to continue to grow. I do have a plan for getting people on board to help me with some of this back-end stuff so I can focus on other things. Um, So stay tuned for that. And don't forget... Our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And as you know, Bravo and Blaze.com has all sorts of fun inspired, Bravo inspired merch and products from most of your favorite shows. Right here, I got my grandfather MFR mug. If you know who that is, type it in the comments. Hold on. Do, see, I'm doing so many things. I have to juggle so many things. All right. <laughs> also, if you are a cannabis mom like myself, who's an entrepreneur trying to break the stigma of cannabis consumption and you want to thrive outside of the corporate world, making money for yourself, please make sure you check out my other podcast, Cannabis Mom Boss, where I share stories of my life as a mom, cannabis advocate, entrepreneur, but also lessons just that I've learned along the way about self-care, personal development, investing, just life in general, momming, all that stuff. Um, The mission of Cannabis Mom Boss is to empower others to safely, responsibly, and confidently come out of the quote-unquote green closet to modernize the perception of today's cannabis consumers, as well as provide the resources resources and tools you need to achieve results as an entrepreneur and mother. If you are new here, I am a former corporate IT consultant who ran and scaled an eight-figure business to a nine-figure business, Strategy, management, and technical consulting are my areas of expertise, but instead of doing that for top global consulting firms and Fortune 500 businesses, like I did for over 15 years, um, I am helping Kino Moms to create their own unique career path by creating digital solutions that are 
that t- that helps support your business and are both passion filled and purpose driven. You don't have to be a can mom or a mom because we support other women. Luann. She's acting up today. She's starting. I'm kidding. I love Luann. Happy birthday. Oh, birthdays. This is my ADHD mind. Now I'm thinking about Pisces season. It's officially Pisces season since our last episode. And I'm a birthday monster, so buckle up. (laughs) Back to Cannabis Mom Boss, though. We are live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern here on the same YouTube channel, which is also available for replay if you missed the live stream. If you are a podcast listener, you are in luck because Cannabis Mom Boss is also available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. And now I want to quickly tell you, it probably won't be that quick. I want to tell you real quick about uh, yesterday's show. I'm not going to retell the whole story, but essentially, well, first of all, looking at this sweater, I just have to quickly retell fact that when I put on this sweater yesterday I like I liked it when I looked at it and it felt good putting on and it felt comfortable and everything but when I looked in the mirror I was like I feel like I am like very white right now I don't know it was just like (laughs) brought out that Caucasian side or whatever I feel like this top that I'm wearing this is from Zara Actually, did I get this? I might have gotten it in Japan. No, I don't know. But I feel like this is more Jenny Blaze style. Like it has the streetwear vibe. See, like with the cutouts, it's like sweatshirt type material. Comfy. Um, But then it has like these pearls, which is, you know, like it elevates it. Elevated streetwear? Is that my style? I need to trademark that because shit is bananas out there right now. We'll get into it. But yesterday I went live. I didn't even have anything prepared because we had a, not a snow day, but a delay because of snow. I hate it here. I really, I really hate it here. I can't wait to move someday. (laughs) But um, it really, this is like normal for people. That we have snow days and when you have children, that affects their, when they go to school and all that stuff and whatever. So I had to improvise and I just gave an update on what I had been doing in the last two weeks since we went live. And I, I manifested a lot of things in the last two weeks, but the two biggest things were that I manifested an interview with Margaret Josephs of the real housewives of new jersey i think some of you may know who that is (laughs) i literally manifested that through a blog post and just preparation and really knowing myself and all that good stuff i made it happen so that available or that video is available for replay um that was last week's episode and i wanted to skip going live last week so i could put in extra time and care into i mean i don't have all the time in the world so it's not like i put in it wasn't like my final thesis <laughs> final doctorate or anything like that but i just put in a little extra time to make sure that i was able to use this platform to educate on cannabis advocacy and the harm that's been done to the cannabis community for a century now, for decades and decades. And um, I think we were able to accomplish that. Some people are saying um, the feedback was, this didn't answer anything. And I went in, I knew that people were going to feel that way because I get it. But I also had some constraints and I laid out all of those constraints before we even started the episode. So all I can say is stay tuned. There's more coming out and that's how they get you, right? Stay tuned to be continued. I don't like that either, but that's I have to follow that for now. 
Anyway, so go check that out. Link is in the show notes. But also, this is documented, okay? I manifested meeting Joe Coy. And all this happened on the same day. It was last Friday. I released my episode with Margaret, and then I met Joe Coy. And I was just so exhausted. It was like an exhausting week. I crashed after that (laughs) but I'm so glad it happened and it's all in yesterday's episode of Cannabis Mom Boss so go check that out the link is in the show notes but also one thing I wanted to show real quick is that in the episode I mentioned how I also manifested meeting Heather McDonald and telling her a story and it happened and I wanted to give the proof so there's the proof. I'm a witch. Hee am I, I'm a good witch, though. Just so y'all know. <laughs> but I have what I've done because I've experienced so much success in accomplishing goals and achieving results. I put together a cannabis mob boss manifestation framework so that I can teach others how to achieve the same type of results and for me what I'm realizing is well I have different offerings because people learn in different ways and everything there's different ways we can work together but I created this manifestation framework so that people can have their own self-paced course to go through because it is a lot and a lot of it is like doing these small exercises and activities that really make you dive deep into like what your real purpose is and what it is that you really love. So I have that offering available, but then also I have another offering where you can take the the self-paced course and have a coaching session with me. And through coaching sessions, I think this is where I not only thrive, but I think Uh, my clients get the most out of it as well because the other option that people ask me sometimes is can you just take care of the technical technical stuff for me and like I don't have to worry about it and sure I can do that but I don't want to do that I would rather teach people and empower others so that you all can be successful and I can say selfishly I can say I had something to do with that. Thank you. (laughs) So my offerings are available. I'm not going to go through my little script because I've read it so many times before. But those are available in the show notes. I'm already like almost 20 minutes in. I also I'm teaching how I got Bravo and Blaze started, like I mentioned earlier, by myself and Um, debuted the first week in January 2022 within four months we reached number eight in the top 100 indie tv reviews charts and I am going to be teaching you all how you can do the same in this top 100 charting podcast academy pre-enrollment is available now for discounted price make sure you go sign up now before spots are gone And now I'm going to get into more fun stuff. I don't know if this is, it's not fun. This is like actual, this is about health, honestly, 420 news. So um, I saw on Instagram, the New York Cannabis Times has shared a post from Canademics where it says New Jersey cops are no longer tested for cannabis. And I thought that was so, I mean, obviously, I'm, whether I, like, this doesn't really impact me directly, but I think this is a good step towards, you know, the greater good of getting everyone to destigmatize. So I thought this was really cool to share. Plus, Jersey, Real Housewives of New Jersey is airing right now, and we have a weed issue in in the conflict that's going on on the show and marge said to jennifer aiden you have marijuana paranoia and that's what sparked the blog post where i said that marge declared war on the cannabis community 
and can of moms. And I hope you all know that when I, if I ever write something like that, I am mostly like, that's part of my humor. I'm not like a serious, like, I'm not trying to be Hoda cop, copy or Savannah, whatever her name is. Um, respect, all the respect to them, love them, but this is not who I am. Anyways, I'm going to move on. So also in 420 news, I know like some people consider 420 to be just the cannabis industry. And maybe I need to change my way of phrasing it, but I support all types of like medicinal wellness and health treatments like cannabis, psychedelics, um, particularly psilocybin mushrooms. Um, those are natural. Those are grown in nature and they're proven to show mental health benefits to help with anxiety, depression, ADHD. I've seen some other things that I wouldn't even think of. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. I think it's worth a look, right? Like, why is this? It, it's illegal because back in the day, politicians were trying to control different particular demographics and it all comes from systemic racism and that's something I just don't stand for. So one of the things that I saw this week in High Times or on High Times magazine on Instagram is that the psychedelics market is expected to hit approximately 12 billion dollars by 2029. I actually think that's a low number. To be honest, I think it's I would like to look into these numbers a little bit more to see. But I something tells me mark my words. OK, this is why I'm recording a podcast, because talking to myself and Luann, nobody's here. And I say things like this and they happen. And now I'm documenting it. Proof. There you go. Also on uh, Psych Spotlight on Instagram, they posted saying that legal ayahuasca churches are a thing in Montreal. And I think that is so interesting. I don't know, like, I'm not the type to just be like, let's go right now. Like, I need to learn more about this because I've never even considered ayahuasca. To me, that was like, I don't know. In my mind, ayahuasca was something you just like don't even do like or think about. And now it's being used to like treat people. So now I'm like and finding out that, you know, the government has been lying to us and they are hypocritical with their own patent on cannabis. But then they make it federally illegal and call it a schedule one substance. Like now I'm looking into these things more and people are saying that it has helped them and I'm open to that. So we'll see. I'm going to move on from the 420 world because, oh my gosh, <sighs> the pop culture world and the Bravo world meet this week in one of the most entertaining feuds I've witnessed in the media in a in a long time like it's not maybe it's not even really a few but like it's a in my mind i've created all these different scenarios of eminem aka marshall mathers aka slim shady verse robin dixon and giselle bryant aka the green-eyed bandits like that thought to me is just crazy cracking me up so hard. I don't know why this next slide is coming up, but real quick, I'll mention, I think I was going to say that after. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just mention it. So also in the last two weeks, I had my annual, yeah, that's right. I said annual, meaning there's more than one. <laughs> last year in 2022, Jason Cameron and I had a Valentine's Day podcast date and we had another one this year. So that was released last Monday. We talk about his relationship status, which has to do with Miss Giselle Bryant, who is making a lot of headlines this week, I guess. 
Um, because also on the reunion this week, part one, she also kind of talked about dating Jason. And I asked him, I mean, he did admit like he's dating. He didn't say he like specifically I'm dating Giselle. But I asked him like, okay, so are you monogamous? So go check out that episode because that was like a nice little bonus episode during this two weeks since we went live. But yes, let me get into this. Okay, so on Monday, on Monday I'm scrolling like usual. I see by wig hello drama on Instagram and they posted from I think this is from page six. Hold on, let me double check. Yeah, I think this was from page six. Um, Eminem files opposition to Giselle Bryant, Robin Dixon's reasonably shady podcast. This made me laugh so hard. I was, I kept thinking of all these different scenarios. Like, why on earth? Like, what prompted this? And come to find out, Savage, he filed on Valentine's Day. Like, not that that even means anything, but I'm just, it just feels like a little extra savage to me a little bit. Um, and I'm just like, I don't, what is happening? Like, why, how did this happen where we have Eminem and Giselle, like going after Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon. And I know they just celebrated their 5 million downloads that they've gotten for their podcast, Reasonably Shady, that they started in 2021. Okay, so I get that. I guess Robin and Giselle, now that they've established their 5 million downloads, now they want to trademark and start selling stuff. And that's, I guess, what prompted this opposition. And I just had like all these scenarios like, okay, did, cause I am familiar with trademarking. Um, I have something in the works that's trademark or be, that's being monitored for trademarking. So I get it, like you pay a service where um, you can get your trademark filed. There's two different trademarks. There's like a service trademark and then there's like product, physical product trademark. And so if you are going to sell any products with like your with Bravo on it, if Bravo is trademarked, then um, nobody else can use that. And if they do try, then you can like sue them for it because you trademarked it first or whatever. Um, and once, so once you have the, and the trademarks, they expire as well after I think like two years or something. Don't, I, I don't know for sure. Um, but while it's active, while your trademark is active, you can pay like, some lawyers, some company or whatever to monitor whether or not anyone's going to tr try to use your trademark, you know, while it's active. And so I'm picturing, and this is an automated thing. Like you don't, there's nobody reading through pieces of paper at the trademark place and being like, oh, no shady. Okay. Like you can automate this <laughs> using technology. So I'm picturing whatever company is handling this, they get like an email that says alert. There's like a, you know, some kind of a trademark infringement potentially. So that triggers some kind of review. And then you have these lawyers say like, okay, this could be, you know, it could be, I don't know. And they either take it upon themselves to go and file this opposition without Eminem even knowing Marshall Mathers, or they go to him and they say, Hey, shady, by the way, I'm picturing Eminem's lawyers, like wearing GQ 
suits and like like they're sexy for some reason sexy white men though <laughs> and i can just see them like going up to him he's like on his yacht or whatever and like listening to music and just i don't know smoking weed maybe i hope and they're like uh excuse me mr shady some these women in uh potomac they are uh trying to trademark reasonably shady how do you feel about that and he just looks and is like hell no like i don't know what went down but i'm dying to know because all these scenarios are running through my head but on so the opposition that so what they have to do the lawyers or whoever is handling this they have to fill out some document to oppose the trademark and submit it to like the trademark bureau or whatever u.s trademark thing organization <laughs> and they say oh okay yeah i guess maybe and then the person who filed so giselle and robin they have until march 26th i think or maybe march 24th um to respond to this opposition otherwise i don't know what happens if they don't respond if they don't respond i think he could just be like okay no they don't get it and then they don't get their trademark but if they say oh hell no like with this is ours they would probably have to pay lawyers to go against m&m's lawyers and potentially go to trial again I'm not a lawyer this is not legal advice these are just scenarios going on in my head because law is like a hobby of mine I love it like to learn about it and it's just I think this is so funny and I'm thinking this is so out of left field I can't believe like does he care does he even know does he know who they are like, I, I just have so many questions. <laughs> okay, so then I'm laughing. I'm thinking if I uh, if someone went up to Eminem right now and was like, do you have a comment on this? I really feel like he'd be like, who are you talking about, ma'am? <laughs> so then this is Monday that I learned this. And then Tuesday, I don't know if this is real, but it was posted by real... RHW post, Real Housewives post. And it looks like a story from Giselle on Giselle's um, Instagram stories. And she like reposted the Jasmine Brands uh, post about this case. And Giselle wrote, Chris Bassett, come get your brother. <laughs> I cannot even like this is so wild and crazy is this an official statement like if they go to court would they be like excuse me um miss brian you you had until march 26th to respond and your response was chris bassett come get your brother <laughs> oh my god oh my god if there is a court case, I am going. I am going. I don't care. I This is hilarious and wild. I cannot believe this. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I'm like, this is... And I'm picturing when things like this happen, I'm picturing if they were in the same room together and they're like, let's say Eminem walks in with his... GQ looking white man lawyers and there's like 10 of them and it's just Giselle and Robin like wearing their <laughs> embellished hats <laughs> they're like we're here and they're like and Eminem doesn't say a word he just like whispers to his the the sexiest lawyer of them all that he has and that sexy lawyer is like Miss Brian Miss <laughs> Miss Dixon, Mr. Mathers is opposing your use of reasonably shady because, and this is in an article, he claims that it would damage his reputation. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, and it, 
it could be damaging to his brand and it can cause confusion in the minds of consumers who have known Marshall by the name Slim Shady since the late 90s. I, this is so good. This is so good. So in my mind, they're in the same room at this conference table and they're embellished hats and they just look at each other and Giselle yells, Chris Bassett, come get your brother. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm just like, this is unbelievable in my mind that this is happening. This is Monday and Tuesday, right? And then it was like, when? Might have been Tuesday night or Wednesday night. I'm not sure. But what I found out was that Haley, Eminem's daughter, who's now 26 years old, she just started a podcast called Just a Little Shady in July of 2022. Giselle and Robin started their podcast in 2021. So this is the chain of events. If you look at this from a legal standpoint, I'm just assuming based on my hobby of law. <laughs> SVU is a great show, by the way. Um, and Forensic Files. But he trademarks in 1998. Obviously, he has it. Giselle and Robin start their podcast in 2021. They should have trademarked it then. And I wonder if we would be in this same situation. However, a year later, his daughter, I believe she did trademark just a little shady. And he obviously didn't oppose it because they even said in one of the articles, like because of her birthright which is AKA nepotism, <laughs> kind of. I mean, is it? I don't know. But, and I'm not mad at them for that, I guess, whatever. Um, I just find out, I just find it to be interesting that, like, I need to know the dynamics. Like, how involved is Eminem in this, actually? Because what it feels like is... Giselle and Robin, they filed their trademark so that they could start selling merch. And they want to sell, like, T-shirts and, like, I think they said lip gloss or something, right? And Haley already has a trademark for Just a Little Shady. Actually, I feel like she should have filed for a trademark. No, because she started after. Okay, so here we go. This is where it gets, like... This is the shadiness of it all, right? So she wouldn't be able to file a trademark opposition because she started first, I think. And so, so I'm wondering if they, like, did his team of lawyers hear about this news first and they went to him and he was like, well, what are they selling? And they say, Lip gloss. Oh, hell no. That's what Haley is going to be selling. Hell no. Take them down. Burn them to the ground. Like, this is one of the scenarios that's going on in my mind. Another scenario that's running up, running through my mind is, imagine if Marshall Mathers has been watching Real Housewives of Potomac this whole time. <laughs> and he's like the ultimate troll who's just like, I'm just going to wait for the right timing to fuck up their life. Oops, I'm supposed to not swear anymore. And that's the kind of shadiness that I kind of live for. However, okay, because of the like sequence of events and like with his daughter being involved and like what I said earlier, how I just realized like, holy crap, Eminem really bamboozled the whole world into rooting for a straight white man. Like we got hoodwinked. He totally hoodwinked us. We, we were frauded, um, defrauded. But, oh man, where was I going with this? It's, okay, so for me, the because the sequence of events, it just feels like it's giving 
straight white man trying to make life harder for two black women and I'm not loving that and especially like they did start their podcast first and if and I know this is like this is a huge learning lesson for any business for Giselle and Robin, unfortunately, they're learning the hard way. You should trademark right away because you can avoid these situations and save a lot of money. Had they trademarked it before Haley, I wonder if he would have gone after them because I looked up shady trademarks. There's 450 search results. There's well over a hundred live active trademarks with the word shady in them. So this does feel kind of shady of him to like single them out. And I get it. He's like, well, this is encroaching in the this podcast realm that my daughter's trying to build up. But it just feels very like straight white man with his nep nepo daughter <laughs> trying to take down these two women who are trying to be the breadwinners of their families, obviously, because we're seeing it all on TV. That's not to say like, oh, you know, like, oh, he should just let them do that or whatever. Like, I'm not saying he should do that either, but I mean, why didn't the Mars company who makes the M&M delicious chocolates why didn't they oppose to, well, I guess he didn't try to trademark Eminem, so. But maybe they could have went after him for using the name Eminem. I don't know. Because one could say that he tarnished the Eminem brand or could cause damage or confuse people. So, I mean, because that's, that's what he's standing on right now. That's his basis. Or taken down Giselle and Robin because people will be confused and he doesn't want to damage his reputation. Oh my god, I love this shade. And I just wonder, like, what would Nicki Minaj say right now? I'm really wondering. So, okay. If if I was in this situation, I would suggest, as a neutral party, I would suggest to Giselle and Robin and to Eminem and to Haley, I think there's a way that they can turn this into a positive PR move where all parties involved benefit. Because if they if he really just shuts them down, I honestly, I feel like that could tarnish Haley's reputation because then it's like, oh, you know, like it's hard to, you know, like feel bad for some, a rich white girl. I'm sorry, but it's hard to be like, yeah, they deserve that when, like, they're just trying to make a podcast and sell some lip gloss. I get it, though, from a business standpoint. However, I think to be successful in business, you have to sometimes um, read the room and know that some of your decisions will have an emotional impact on the general public. And... I truly feel like if they pursue this, they are kind of underestimating the Bravo community as a whole. And not just the Bravo community, but the way that our culture is now because of technology and social media. Like, this will not look great for Haley in the end, in my opinion. Don't sue me. I'm going to move on. Holy shit. Really? Okay. What's next? 
Oh, okay. Just before I went live, the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Season 3 trailer just got released. I'm still, like, in a state of, like, I'm trying to recover from Caroline Manzo and Brandy Glanville. So I haven't even been able to move forward, but I don't know. Should I watch the... I'm scared to watch the... Um, the preview or the trailer and have YouTube like shut down my stuff. So I'll skip it. But go, I put I reposted it, I think, from Bravo by Gay. So go check out the trailer. I'll check it out when I'm done here. All right, let's move into Bravo shows. First show. <laughs> okay, this week we had The Real Housewives of Potomac season seven, episode 18, reunion part one. The description for this episode it is in part one, Ashley reveals the reason behind her recent breakup with Winter House's Luke and what she is set to gain from her divorce settlement with Michael. Mia discloses how she and Gordon lost control of their businesses and updates the group on their rocky financial status. Candace reacts to watching Giselle's allegations against Chris play out and accuses her former friend of bold faced lies. I'm sorry, but. I took a poll this week and majority of the population agree that I won the bet with the Brav Bros that Ashley and Luke are no longer. They, I bet that they would break up before one year and we used BravoCon as that metric. And I, I don't know, it's weird though because she keeps saying... Like, they broke up. She said something on Watch What Happens Live. And then she posts, like, visiting him in Minnesota. And then they say again, oh, we broke up. or what? I don't know. It's just so weird. But end of the day, I think I won that bet. So, yeah. Um, I've been rooting for Candace this whole season. Like, she, she's become my new favorite. But I was a little disappointed in one of her comments to Giselle. Like, and now that I think about it, the neck comment, that is body shaming, right? And the ankle comment, like I, especially if someone said something about my ankles, I would probably cry because I hate my ankles. <laughs> like, why are you trying to hurt me more than I already am? I'm just taking this personally now, but... Um, kidding. I just, I still want to root for Candace though, even though she said, I just want her to stop saying vile things. Like don't body shame other women. Say something about her personality. Don't say anything about her body. I don't know. That's just how I feel. And then also like why Karen hasn't even really talked yet. And Ashley looks so stunning, but now that we watch the episode, like, I really, really don't like her hair. I don't like the hair. And that's not body shaming because I'm just talking about the style of her hair. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous woman. But I didn't love the hair. Um, Wendy didn't really talk either. I'm sorry. I'll be honest. I had a meet cute with Mia at BravoCon and I was reading her for her this season and I don't like dislike her or anything. I don't feel like a lot of her behavior is defendable, but also at the same time, I feel like her, her stories, they were, they were serious things, but I felt like I wasn't really invested that much. Like I kind of checked out when it was her storyline time, if that makes sense. Um, and I am livid, livid that Juan Dixon is not here right now. I honestly, like I said, I'm only one person, so I don't know everything that's going on all the time. Like I want to know what's going on, but I didn't get to the part where I thought about whether Juan would be at the reunion or not. And so in my mind, I'm like, absolutely. This actually reminds me of when I, when we knew Captain Lee was going to leave. And I was like, they would not give us Captain Sandy. That is just awful. And like, then lo and behold, Sandy shows up. Like, that's kind of this moment. 
I was just like, ugh. Shoot, I just got distracted now. I don't even know what I was talking about. But uh, somebody help me. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a comment. That's how I'll recover from this. I think there should be the same amount of vitriol. Did I say that right? And condemning of coming after people's families, reputations, and businesses as they are as there is coming for people's face and body. How is one more vile? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Because I feel like with body shaming, it's just like... I don't know. That's like easy thing to... That's like low-hanging fruit, I feel like. And Candace is so intelligent that I feel like she's lowering her quality of shade <laughs> not quality it's still good quality she's lowering her I'm not really sure what the right word is but I feel like she can do better I don't know what where I was going with that so I'm gonna move on because it's late family karma okay family karma season three episode 14 wedding woes the episode description is, as everyone gathers for Amrit and Nicholas's wedding, tempers flare between the couple and Amrit's parents, threatening to derail the entire weekend. Raj confronts Rish and delivers an ultimatum. I really, I don't even want to, I feel like I don't even want to comment on Family Karma because it was just so, it's just so good and amazing. I have no notes. Like, bravo, literally. And... I do have something to say, though. I am not happy that we have two Bravo shows that have been nominated for GLAAD Awards for Best Reality Television Show. That those two would be Family Karma and Southern Hospitality. And neither are getting reunions or got a reunion. And I'm just not happy about that. I don't like that. This is... The best show on Bravo right now is is Family Karma. How are you not going to give them ugh, a reunion? It makes me so mad. Okay, I'm going to move on. Below Deck. Oh, I remember now what I was talking about because I was talking about Captain Sandy. Juan Dixon didn't show up. I just want to mention Juan Dixon has some explaining. Robin has some explaining. I was so mad finding out that he wasn't going to be there. And, um, he, we don't even, nobody's even talking about this crazy lawsuit where he's named, where his, someone on his basketball team was catfished by his assistant coach and like forced into like basically sexual assault and cyber crimes across the board and Juan did nothing. So I would like them to have to answer to that. And I would like them to have to answer to this crazy crazy sociopathic lying on camera and I just need her to admit it I think and I need him to admit it so that we can move forward otherwise I think it's grounds for dismissal just saying okay Whew, sorry about that <laughs> I had to go back all right below deck season 10 episode 13 another one bites the dust Captain Sandy lets go of an integral member of the crew, leaving the team operating a man down on a charter full of beauty queens. One guest in particular takes her incessant request to the limits, pushing Chef Rachel and the and the interior crew. Dot 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 because it got cut off. <laughs> so Alyssa's gone, and I have to say, like, I think that was the right decision. I feel like some people are kind of mad at Sandy, but she was disrespectful. Even Camille was like, I told you she's so got such a bad attitude. And she goes, justice for Camille. <laughs> I got to say, like, I like Camille. And if you like Camille, just know that she is coming out with music like now this week or maybe she already did so you can check that out on her instagram 
Um, yeah, these beauty queens, first of all, why, I guess, I mean, for the show, I guess it makes sense to come in with your stuff on and everything, but it just seemed to be a little bit too much. And that kind of set the tone for how high maintenance they were going to be. And Lakeisha, I feel really bad because they were calling her Laqueef, <laughs> but that also is funny. So she just... I mean, she gave me Lindsay Hubbard vibes with the how many sandwiches have you made for me? Why? Why does she need these sandwiches? And then I've never seen anyone like choose to sleep in a common area over a private room because the private room is too small. Like you're on a yacht. How big do you expect your room to be? I mean, I guess, I don't know. I need to ask Captain Carrie. I've lost touch with Captain Carey, my favorite captain. I need to connect with him soon. I don't know. I just, I'm ready for this new interior to come on and mess up Ben's world. The way he's like so smitten over Camille and then like one of his ex hookups or whatever shows up and he's like all about it. He's like, uh oh. So funny. All right. Summer House. Season 7, Episode 2. A Line in the Sand. Oh, this episode got me upset. Okay. As the holiday weekend continues, Kyle and Carl finally address their issues. Maya confronts Lindsay over their tense conversation in L.A. Gabby continues her pursuit of a hot prospect while Sierra joins the share house ready to send it. Dot, dot, dot. It got cut off again. For some reason, the Bravo um, website doesn't, I get error messages. Oh my gosh, my stomach hurts all of a sudden. Sorry if you're like looking at me weird. Okay, so this week on Summer House, it was really upsetting and disappointing to see Kyle and Carl's conversation on the beach. One, because I could see Carl seem like he wanted to cry. Like he seemed really upset and that, that, nervousness that he had looked like it came from a place of being afraid that his friend wouldn't be supportive and that's exactly what Kyle gave and it was disappointing to see Kyle like I after watching the traders which the reunion is coming up next week but after watching the traders I was like okay I get Kyle now like he is smart so I wasn't sure before from watching him on Summer House, but I do believe that he is a smart guy. And granted, he's never been a CEO before. Like, who's, like, you learn as you go. That's part of the job, right? And so I can see his lack of experience causing this dynamic where Carl doesn't feel supportive or supported, and he, he seems a little lost and, like, maybe... He needs Kyle to be his friend and not his co-worker right now. But Kyle's so focused on the work part of it and totally missing the friendship part of it. And that's where business can be hard, especially when you have partnerships or you work with people that you are close with or, you know, any type of situation like that. But the most upsetting part was, you know... Carl has openly discussed his issues with substance abuse and it's not like he is trying to hide anything really, but for Kyle to openly on camera say things about Carl's past behavior when he was in a different place, it feels like so low as a friend even at, just as a friend, but as a boss or <coughs> employer, it feels really, really, really unprofessional. And some said it could even be criminal, but I don't think it should go that far. I just, I just think that people need to be careful and understand their responsibilities in these types of roles. 
Like, imagine Leva calling out one of... I mean, she's not, like, friend friends with her staff, so it's a little different, but whatever. I'm getting sidetracked. So, Maya and Lindsay have their confrontation on the beach, and I, I will be honest, we're only on episode two, but in episode one, I was like, shoot, I am nervous about being a Lindsay Hubbard stand because the way that they edited things, they made it look like... Lindsay is being like controlling or manipulative or whatever but in episode two with Maya and this whole like family feud thing and the conversation in the uber or whatever like I feel like I don't know what happened in that car and maybe maybe I guess Lindsay could be gaslighting her but it did I don't know I I got study back on the hub house train like i feel solid in standing lindsey hubbard right now because i feel like she she is using logic and she is open about her feelings and she there's no like maya seems to be taking it too far in this scenario but granted, we don't know everything, so that's just from an outsider's perspective. Gabby, I'm sorry, but I don't know that guy's name that was the potential hot prospect, but he was he was definitely hot. And the way she, I thought she was joking at first, but the way she turned him down because of his Zodiac sign, I was like, what? Why on earth would you do that? And... I'm just like, okay, maybe this girl is a self-saboteur. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, I wrote a blog post. Actually, I wrote two blog posts about Summer House this week. The links are in the show notes. One I talked about. Um, I didn't talk about this yet because it was in the first episode and we didn't have a live episode since then. But um, after the first episode, Carl talks about being like California sober and like I guess he's no longer California sober, but he did talk about being California sober at one time. So I did a whole blog post on that. And then um, I wrote another blog post about what happened with uh, Kyle and, well, Kyle's, what I perceive as an intoxicated rant, which is very, I, I don't know if ironic is the right word, but it's like hello you're intoxicated talking about somebody else being intoxicated shout out to bravo wild black because they posted the funniest memes saying of people being completely devastated because they forgot their laptop at home and they're scared that kyle cook is gonna think they're coked out and i couldn't like i literally was laughing out loud so hard so i just want to give them a shout out don't leave your laptop at home. Oh my God, Kyle Cook's gonna think he <laughs> he was so good. Like, ugh, that was awful. All right, <laughs> moving on to Jersey. Real Housewives of New Jersey, season thirteen, episode three. Boys will be boys. Oh Lord, here we go. So in this description, when drama at Danielle's mozzarella party eases after an unexpected olive branch from Teresa all is seeming seemingly fine until Louie and Joe go head to head at guys night while Bill fails to make Jennifer feel better after things with Dolores and Margaret go from bad to worse Teresa's daughters are upset after hearing Melissa and Joe's podcast in which hurtful accusations about the past are brought to light Rachel and John struggle to get on the same page about how many kids they want Dolores finds herself stuck between Polly and Frank in an awkward encounter. So much going on in Jersey. I don't even know what to pick out right now, but one thing, Rachel Fuda, I love the openness. I love having this insight into this part of your life because a lot of women don't, I mean, it's hard to talk about as a woman going through it. So to be courageous enough to discuss it. Ooh, hi, TJ. 
<laughs> to be able to discuss it is very um, courageous. And I myself suffer from a stillbirth almost two years ago. And like, I can't even really still talk about it yet. So I, I have talked about it a little bit here and there, but I'm still healing. So I can't imagine like, I'm like done having kids, but being in it and having to go through that is, is very difficult. So I love that we get to see that from a newbie and I don't know people. Okay. So I did a little video like real or YouTube short, whatever you want to call it. And it was clips of Joe Gorga because he went from like zero to a hundred and back down to zero in that scene with Louis. And I've been saying this for a while, but like, I like Louis. I don't see what the issue is with Louis. I don't know why people are going so hard. And I'm like, I'm watching Joe Gorga just like explode over these wedding invitations, and rah, like slamming on the table. And I couldn't help but laugh. I was laughing really hard because I, <laughs> I was just like, no way I would be so embarrassed. And it was, it was so ironic because he's like, you should be embarrassed while he's like causing this huge scene. I'm just like, oh my God. And Louis somehow Jedi mind tricked him and got him back down to zero to the point where he was like, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> when it came to talking to his sister about his feelings. And I just want to say, as far as the Joe Gorga and Teresa thing, people have been explaining to me in DMs or in comments like, this is why it's okay that the Gorgas are mad or this is why the, you know, Teresa and Louie should be mad. And I'm, I hear all of the things that they're saying. A lot of it is like the Italian tradition. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> My mother is a Korean immigrant. Koreans have hardcore traditions. And I can't imagine my mother trying to force those traditions on me. Like I could see her doing pat doing it passive aggressively, but at the end of the day, I'd be like, it's my wedding. Like, I don't really, I'm sorry that you feel this way, but whatever. And the way that they're just so hardcore about it, I'm like, I get that. But like, it's 2023. Their parents aren't even here anymore. So what are you teaching your children? Like, what are, what are you trying to pass on? What is your legacy? Is this what you want your legacy to be? And I don't like to take sides, but I just, I see Joe Gorga as being his, this wounded child, not calling him like a child, but like his inner child being so wounded and this is a hot take. People are going to hate me for this. But I don't know. Like Teresa said, her father used to scream and yell or whatever when she was younger. And I know we've seen them on the show as grandparents. And they were the sweetest, sweetest human beings. But I see like my parents now as grandparents and think about my childhood. And they were like totally different people. And I feel like there may be some deep childhood trauma from Teresa and Joe's childhood that Teresa seems to be trying to heal and address, whereas Joe, instead of addressing it, he's just like covering it up with this like machismo like just this is how it's done and it's like why let's let's just slow down and ask why and dig a little deeper to find out what is it inside that's really causing all this anger because anger comes from 
sadness usually. Sadness usually comes from a place of hurt. Why are you hurt? It's okay to say you're hurt and it's okay to be vulnerable. And I guess in Italian culture, it's not common for people to go to therapy. I didn't really know that, but I think therapy could help a lot. That's what I'm going to say. People are going to hate me now. All right, I'm going to move on to Vanderpump Rules. Season 10, episode 3, Troll Mates. That's kind of a funny um, episode title. So Lala drops a bombshell on Raquel that shakes the foundation of their newfound friendship. Sandoval takes some time away from the bar to play rock star with his cover band, Tom Sandoval and the most extras. Ariana and Katie take the next step in opening their sandwich shop. James schemes to get some time with Raquel's dog, Graham. Shayna interviews Schwartz about his divorce for her podcast, leading to an explosive showdown with Katie. Also, behind the scenes on social media, this week Raquel posted a picture of her and Tom. Katie responded to that. I think she, I think Raquel said something like, oh, just because. And Katie responded saying like, oh, you thought this was going to do something, but you're getting like eaten up in the comments or something. And Katie also dropped some receipts between her and Shayna where they talked about um, Katie's feelings about the whole Schwartz and Raquel thing and Shayna in this episode is like trying to defend her behavior about like you know she's definitely nudging Schwartz and Raquel together and I'm not saying like that's so so wrong because they are both single however if like you are Katie is supposed to be her friend and Katie has openly vocalized that this would hurt her to Shayna. And Shayna has continued to ignore that and proceed with nudging them together. And so I just found it really sad for Katie because I like Katie. Um, I think Katie has been misunderstood because of the marriage with Schwartz and now that they're not together we're gonna see Katie come out amazing we're all gonna love Katie that's my prediction and we're all gonna really not like Schwartz and Shana I get it for your podcast you're trying to like get people to listen but that's not the way I would not do it that way I don't think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just didn't like that. Um, James broke my heart when he was crying over Graham. <sighs> this is when I see, I see James's inner child too when he cries like that. And like he, he really turns into like his inner child of being like, no, Graham, like he's so upset and it breaks my heart. That's why I can never quit. James Kennedy. Oh my gosh. Um, and then also that scene with Lala, Raquel, and Katie, that was, ugh, Lala is just, I, <laughs> I appreciate Lala for who she is. And in this episode, she gave us unhinged double date. That was, there was so much in just that date that I could probably talk about for like an hour, but, and then the scene w saying like, oh, I cheated on, or your boyfriend cheated on you with me and you better not date her ex-husband. <laughs> like that was just so, that's what we love about Lala, right? Like she just is so wild in that way and it makes me laugh. Um, One other thing, I have to explain this, okay? So I made this Schwartz and Sandy shirt like oh in the beginning of last season season nine right and I did it as a joke like I literally was making it on my phone and like laughing and giggling as I was making it because at the time it was when they were coming up with the name and they're like we're going with Schwartz and Sandy's and like just the whole process and everything like, there was so much contention between Katie and Tom because of the 
Katie, Tom, and Tom because of the bar, and like they still hadn't had gotten their logo. And I think I wrote something like, I, "Here, I got merch for them already. I got the Schwartz and Sandy logo before they got their logo." But I wasn't like being serious about this. I was just like joking around, right? And so I put Schwartz and Sandy's, and then I think in the front it says like bar crawl or something, and on the back. I put cocktail festival. I wrote in there like in yellow so you couldn't really see it on purpose, but <clears throat> I put uh, West Hollywood. So this is before they even had a location, okay? But then underneath I wrote Katie. Sh I don't know if you can see this. I wrote Katie Schwartz was here because never in a mil million years at that time did I think that they would get a divorce. And then on top of it, I was like just, I thought I was being funny. <laughs> so, um, I didn't think anyone would even buy it. And nobody bought it. I was right. Nobody bought it in that season. I was, like, not expecting anything. But then since in the last couple of months, the people are starting to buy them now. And I'm, like, I feel bitter sweet about it because I'm, like, sweet. There People are, like, buying some merch. But then on the other hand, I'm, like, I feel so bad because I did this as a joke and I swear, I swear I didn't, I wasn't, I'm not trying to make a dig at Katie in this. It was more like a dig at Tom. Like, look, your wife has to put Katie Schwartz was here for you to like actually have her have a say in this bar or whatever. So anyways, you can still get it at my shop if you're interested. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm going to move on. Okay, I still have two more shows. So, Real Housewives of Miami, Season 5, Episode 15, Lines in the Sand. Two housewives, wait, no, it was Summer House, A Line in the Sand, and Real Housewives of Miami is Lines in the Sand. So, this description is, Alexia shuns Adriana, Lisa gets support from Leah Black, but loses an ally in her mother-in-law. Oh, oh my gosh, this episode was kind of tough because we, it was so cringy how Adriana was like doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on this Frankie statement that she made to Alexia that was visibly making her upset. And like, that's when, even if you are, if you are, ju feel like you're justified. When somebody is that upset, I feel like you should probably ease off a little bit. Like, it kind of reminds me of, like, Kenya Moore. No shade to Kenya because I'm scared of her. But, like, she will keep going even when people have, like, backed off, you know? And that's, like, when it's, like, too much. But um, Adriana, she just kept going with it. And then she said she felt remorse or whatever. But the way that they had to split up the tables for Julia's dinner, birthday dinner, was so funny. Because Nicole, and I think I like Nicole now. I've been kind of a Nicole hater to date. But I think I like her now because... um. I like how she's a hostess. She definitely, like, that's the level. Those are the standards that I like. And I'm down with hanging out with her on a trip. <laughs> but also, she was a really good host. And I, that's important in having a relationship with someone. If, if you're not on the same page as, like, host duties go, then things can go sour. So... I like Nicole now? I think I do. Um, the Leah Black cameo was so great. I love how she had all her like merch set up, like displayed. That is such a hustler move, and I love it. You know how I roll. Bravo, Liz. Um, so, and it's, I'm torn with Leah because I think what she tells Lisa, she gives good advice to Lisa, but at the same time, Leah, is Leah a bad person? Because apparently her husband is one of Jeffrey Epstein's lawyers, and I just, that really bothers me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I, I need to know people's opinions on that. 
But yeah, Miami is my favorite Housewives franchise right now. Um, we also had Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles, Season 14, Episode 11, Flag and Loathing in Las Vegas. Altman, Flag, and Tracy triple list in Vegas, which could yield commissions as high as the mountaintop lots they've come here to sell. Heather confronts Altman about being left out after putting in the work to get the listing off the ground. Da, 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 I got cut off. So this episode was so cringy and like I don't even really watch watch this show like it's been I haven't I haven't been like focusing out focusing on it that much and following the storylines just like kind of vaguely or whatever but uh Josh and Tracy are supposed to be like besties and they get into it so that's super uncomfortable to watch and Tracy I see as like this badass mom boss like, I would love to have her as a mentor. And the way she kind of, like, came undone on camera was kind of hard to watch. But at the same time, also comforting that nobody's perfect. <laughs> Even Tracy Tudor. So... Um, and, but her, I mean, she didn't do anything wrong. It's just like, she was emotional, you know, rightfully so. Josh Flagg called her kid a, see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, but these houses in Vegas, like, I want to know who these people are that are buying these houses. They're like the base, the lowest standard house model is like 10 million dollars and they have like a bunch of like a huge area of land where they're building a bunch of mansions and it's like i don't even know what the number was but it was insane i was like oh my gosh who are these people (laughs) okay i went well over an hour i didn't mean to i just have so much to say and it's been a long time this is like my favorite place to just talk and talk. I could stay if you guys want me to. Um, another thing that happened this week. I want to give a shout out to Blazy Susan who sent me a an amazing package with Blazy Susan cones, a tray hat, shirt, rolling paper, kits, and joint holder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Blazy Susan. Love that brand. Um... I also want to just remind you all to subscribe and turn on notifications. Subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, and or leaving a five-star rating is incredibly appreciated and helps this show continue to grow. I feel like I've said that already. Make sure you tune in when we go live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern for Cannabis Mom Boss and every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern for Bravo and Blaze. The audio replay is available on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. <sighs> I don't want to leave. Should I stay? Should I go? I think I gotta go. Thanks for being here, everyone. Have a great weekend and stay lit, fam.